I'm Tony Ruiz, contributing editor at Gold Derby, here with uh, LaMonica Garrett, the star of 1883. And um, LaMonica, one of the things that I wanted to uh, just start with is I was watching the show, and one of the things that I love about it is that Thomas is a Black man, and yet, and it's a part of the story, but it's not conventional in the way that many Westerns who have tried to tackle having a Black character have. Um, was that something that immediately drew you to the script? Yeah, there were a few things that drew me to it, and that was a huge one. Um, Thomas, their relationship, him and Shay, was one of my favorite things about the show, and his race, his ethnicity, everything was never mentioned. It was it was just these two guys that were that were best friends just trying to find their way. And I love the fact that in the writing, Taylor never mentioned it. And the only time that it does come up throughout the series is when Thomas might reference to it to Noemi or even a couple times to Shay. But other than that, it just it is what it is. And you know, you think back to these old westerns with these other, you know, buddy couples and these duos, like even Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It's never like hey, we're both white guys. You know, it's just, that's just what it is. So I love the fact that race isn't mentioned and it's just these two guys out on the trail. Yeah, what is it about the relationship between Shay and Thomas that it seems like for, in many ways, Thomas is the only one that Shay listens to. Is that just because of their kind of like long history together? I believe so. I mean, when you, when you go to war with someone, when you're, you know, your brother at arms, it just gets you closer. And this is long after the war and they've just been, you know, on this trek together and they understand each other, they know each other. The, the left hand knows what the right is doing. They have their routines when they wake up in the morning, they get the coffee, they sit on the stump, they just get each other. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful story. It's, it's, yeah, me and Sam hit it off right away and we knew the impact of this relationship. And, you know, we've never seen that before especially in this genre. Yeah, the closest kind of parallel that I can think of is another one of my favorite uh, Westerns, which is uh, Lonesome Dove. Uh, yeah. And Danny Glover as Dietz. Um, yeah. And, it, and it's, but I mean, we're talking 30 years ago. Um, yeah. Uh, what is it about this genre? I mean, what is it about Taylor Sheridan that, did you speak to Taylor at all about like this particular character and why he wanted you know, this particular character in this show? He didn't tell me in specific why he wanted Thomas there, but it was, you know, if they met while he was a Buffalo soldier and Shay was a captain, then that kind of, you know, it kind of lends itself to who Thomas is. And we talked about Thomas's character, his backstory during the audition process, but never why it had to be a black cowboy. And that's another thing that I love too. And it's funny, like me and Taylor, you know, while we're filming, while we're shooting, we're going from city to city, state to state. And me and Taylor and Tim actually would always find each other in the gym, like first thing in the morning, working out before we go on set. And I'm telling Taylor all these little fun facts about black cowboy history and like groundbreaking facts, you know? And he's like, oh, wow. you know, like it didn't occur to him, like we're doing this just to, you know, um, be different or just to break ground. It was to Taylor, it was just, this guy's black and this guy's white, let's tell this story. And to me, it was much more significant than that because I know the history of this genre and I know what I've never seen before. And when I was reading these scripts, I knew that this was a character I'd never seen in Westerns before. And, you know, one of the things I love about, about Thomas is that in many ways, he is kind of the voice of reason on the trip, but he's also a man and correct me if, if I'm off here, but I feel like he's a man that fights against allowing himself to feel joy. He, he, he's seen so much, you know, opposed with the rest of the people that he's traveling with on this journey, he's had it harder in this country than, than everyone else. So he's seen more things, he's, he's been around, and it's just like he knows to keep an even keel. Like he knows how harsh this world can be, but he also knows the growth in humanity. And he feels that for humanity. Like he came, he's a former enslaved person. Now he's a Buffalo soldier. Now he's a Pinkerton agent. So he's seen 
what life can be. So he has that hope in him, but he just, he keeps the lid on it. And the love thing that he found with Noemi is something that just blindsided him. He didn't see that coming. Like he's familiar with horses, with the terrain, with weapons, with his hands, but he's not familiar with women. And that's why that dynamic was just so rich to me. Uh, them finding love together and the pace of it and how it happened. It was just, yeah, it, it all starts with the writing. Yeah, what is it about Taylor's writing that you think, you know, he's kind of in many ways, I think, brought the Western to a new place um, yeah. with with a lot of his shows. And he's so concerned, he's so detailed in in his writing, uh, all the actors that I've talked to from the show have talked about the detail in the scripts. Um, what is it about his writing that you think has, you know, captured uh, viewers so much? I think he lives it, you know? And one thing I said about Taylor, he'll never ask us to do anything as far as cowboying and, you know, horse riding and, and that culture that he won't do himself. You know, you've been around some directors, it's 110 degrees in Fort Worth and they're inside a cooling tent with a megaphone, like, all right, do this and do that. Like Taylor's on, on, on a horse riding up to us, telling us to do this and what he needs from us, you know, tank top on, cowboy hat, like he's, he's in it. He just gets the culture and he didn't invent the genre, but he definitely gave it like a, a shot of adrenaline. And, and you know, every single person I've talked to has has talked about Cowboy Camp, and it's just and and as a as somebody who has been an athlete, um, I'm wondering if if your athletic background prepared you for Cowboy Camp, or was it something that just completely like <laughs> shocked you? It it helped. It helped with recovery and um, the mental fortitude. If I can't get something, like if I'm not getting this right now, just knowing the more I keep working on it, I'm going to get it eventually. But you're using muscles out there you've never used before. You're applying skills that you've never thought to put together before. Uh, you know, it's hard enough riding a horse, but you're riding and you're trying to, you know, wrangle up some cattle and pull your gun at the same. Like, it's just not natural. It's like telling someone to go out there and be Steph Curry. When he's been practicing that his whole life, how to dribble and just fade away three, it's it's unnatural. But through repetition, it be it becomes natural. Does does the the atmosphere on set? You know, it, it's it's both physically challenging, obviously, and you know you have also this heavy dramatic story to tell. Did one of those challenges um, seem more difficult than the other? I think weathering the storm like the storm of the elements that was tough um not so much for the heat with me i'm good with you know extreme heat i could just kind of sit still and just you know not think about it and i had on like a wool jacket bandolero 10 pounds like i had everything but when we got to montana there were some days that i just like how are we going to figure this out it was you know 20 degrees 60 mile per hour wind chill snow flurries and we have a lot of dialogue the horses don't like it. They're temperamental. They feel a storm coming and they're getting restless. The, the cold weather to me was the challenge. But when I look to my left and I see Sam on his horse first thing in the morning, 77 years old, you know, the steam coming out of the horse's mouth. I look to my right and I see Tim just ready to get after it. Big beard. I'm like, we're about to knock this out. Like, it, you know, there's strength in numbers and we, we all held each other up well. I, you know, Thomas is such a, in, in many ways, he's such a, he's kind of like an internal character, and yet you have to communicate so much, uh, oftentimes with, with so little. Um, so as an actor, how did you go about kind of like, you know, building that, building those moments? I think it's the, the people you work with as well, and you feed off of them and their energy, and their eyes are everything to you, and your eyes are everything to them, and we just connected. So there were moments where I think Cowboy Camp had a lot to do with that, us building a bond together for close to a month before we started filming. And right when we went into filming, that connection was already established. It wasn't one of those jobs where you, you know, you work all day and then you go home and play daddy, you're changing diapers. You know, we were there the whole time, you know, throughout the duration of it. And it just, that helped. Waking up in the morning, every morning, hearing horses talking to each other outside the window, 
uh, you know, being on your horse every day, even your days off, we're all together going to the store maybe or, or riding horses again. It's just the community that, that he set up for us to win, to succeed, it helped. But yeah, just leaning on Sam and, and Gratiella and Tim and Faith and, you know, Isabel, like we all, yeah, nothing happens in a vacuum. We all did that together. Has this experience, you know, as a fan of the of the Western genre, where would you like to see this genre go? Um, has has this kind of changed, like your desire to, or in, enhanced your desire to see these kinds of stories worked into the genre more? It enhances it. I already loved westerns. Maybe Unforgiven might be my favorite movie of all time. Uh, but just seeing this point of view and through eyes, you know, goggles that we've never seen before we've he, he didn't recreate the wheel it's still the oregon trail it's still wagons it's still horses but we're seeing these perspectives from immigrants from young women from what strong women in general from black cowboys you know it's just there's so many perspectives that we don't know about that time and throughout the 1800s there were so many black cowboys that helped build this country that had so many accomplishments and and contributions to building the american west and taylor he showed us that. And Thomas is an amalgamation of all those famous, you know, you know, black cowboys that we've never heard of. All of them were in Thomas. And that's the way that I put on myself to, you know, to tell this story the right way. It starts with the writing and, and just the research that I did. And um, yeah, Thomas meant a lot to me and, and for a lot of people. Tell me, tell me more about the, the, the kind of research did you did. Did you, did you model him? on anybody in particular? Uh, when I, I met with my dialect coach and when I was searching different dialects that we were trying to come up with Thomas, uh, there was a, a cowboy by the name of Floyd Frank and he just passed away maybe two years ago. He was over a hundred and it's a recent cowboy, uh, but he has a legacy in the, in the Beaumont area, in the Southeast Texas area where he's just a legend down there. And I heard him and I'm like, that's Thomas. So we put some of that with some of some other, you know, voices and, you know, dialects, but he was the main one and just a lot of different, you know, cowboys from back in the day, like maybe not their energy or their aura, but it was their story and their, their resiliency and their fortitude and their stillness and their, you know, just who they were as men. I think I used some of that to, you know, how he carried himself and how he walked around. What is it about Westerns, just the genre in general, that that attracts you so much? The struggle. It's just the struggle. You know, it's against nature. It, it happens to everyone. It's, it's, it's unforgiving. And the fortitude that these people have to have to keep waking up each day and have the positivity to keep just going and going and going. And we all have that. Things have gotten a lot easier in modern day with all the, you know, technology and all the, you know, but it's still a struggle. Everyone's fighting their own battles and Westerns, you get to see that battle firsthand without, you know, phones and televisions and whatever getting in the way, you just get, a, you know, the rawest. Yeah, it's just, it's that, it's that battle, man. It's that struggle and we're still fighting. it. And, and we have shows like this to hopefully take it, take that struggle into the future. Um, uh, everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the Emmys, and stay tuned uh, for interviews with more contenders throughout the season. LaMonica Garrett from 1883, uh, real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for talking to me, brother.